Hello, Year 4. I hope you're doing very well indeed. I really enjoyed uh, the chapter that we read yesterday. And before we get on to the literal questions um, about that chapter, we are first going to recap the eight key bits of vocabulary that we looked at yesterday. So I am going to call them out in any order and I would like you to do the action back to me. So if you would like to pause the video for a moment and just recap the words that are on the screen behind me, that is absolutely fine. If you feel that you're ready for it, then we'll get straight into it. So first word, arrange, arrange. Remembering a range is to put something in, uh, in, in, in an order of sorts, and we pretended it was within size, so arrange, slowly getting smaller. Uh, word number two, horrified, horrified. Meaning to feel horror or maybe feeling a bit frightened by something, so we should have both hands on the side of our face, horrified. Um, word number three, let's go for lacked, lacked which is a verb to mean not have something or to be without something. So we should have a big zero there, lacked. Um, number four, let's go for stripping, stripping. So it's to take off the outside layer of something. So we had pretended that this was a wall, stripping the wallpaper, stripping. Word number five, uh, designing, designing. Can you remember the action for designing? Remember harnessing our inner artistic Miss Boots, pretending that we are painting or drawing on a canvas of sorts, designing something, um, so creating or making plans for it. Uh, number six, let's go for soothe. Soothe, which remember is to relax something. We So we pretended we were stroking a dog or a cat to relax it, to calm it down. Okay, the penultimate word now, remained, remained. So it means to stay or to carry on being. So imagining we're staying in one place, remained, remained. And final word, can you remember what it's going to be even before I say it? Do you remember your word that well? Final word is mortified, mortified. So again, a similar one with our hands is with horrified, but instead of being on the side of our face, as if we're really scared, remember mortified feels like a bit more embarrassing. So we're just covering our face almost in shame. Oh, mortified, mortified. Really, really well done, guys. Hopefully we have got the meaning, the actions of those words all sort of sorted now. Um, what, for today's vocab activity, let me just share my screen and I'll go through that with you. So what I would like you to do, we have four sentences here. And what I'd like you to do is to replace the word in each sentence that's in bold with a synonym so that it makes sense. What does the word synonym again mean? We've used that word quite a lot recently. So hopefully we remember that it means uh, a similar word that is similar in meaning or um, is the same in meaning. So let's look at the first one together. Abdi walked into Ark Franklin and was mortified to discover that it was non-school uniform day. So we need to replace the word mortified what does that mean again? Yeah, so it means to be uh, a bit shocked and a bit embarrassed by something. Um, so what word could we use that is a synonym of mortified? There are quite a few that come into my head. Um, I'm going to go for shocked. I'm going to say shocked for that one because he's just, he's walked in and he's really, really shocked and embarrassed to find that he's forgotten non-school uniform day. So I'm going to go for shocked there. That's my word. So when you're completing this activity, I would like you to choose a different one. If you don't have the sheet, absolutely fine. Just number these on a bit of paper. Number one, two, three, four. And no need to copy out the full sentence. Just replace that one word, please. So pause the video now and we'll go through some answers uh, in just a moment. Off you go. So I hope you've all had a chance to have a look at those four sentences and come up with some synonyms for the words in bold. So we've gone through the first one. Some ideas I would have come up with maybe are uh, horrified, startled, embarrassed, shocked, like I put there would have been absolutely fine. Anything along those lines that show that Abdi is maybe uh, a bit embarrassed or a bit um, taken aback. Um, question two. In her notebook, Xanthi designed her dream house. So what word did you put there? 
some ones that you could have done, and these aren't all the correct answers. These are just some uh, some suggestions. You could have maybe done sketched, planned, uh, decorated, something along those lines that shows that she's thinking of how it's going to look. Um, Chanel stripped stripped the wrapping paper from her birthday present. Words that could have gone there, maybe ripped the wrapping paper from her birthday present, tore or peeled perhaps. Loads of other ones you could have gone for with that. And then finally, the boy remained in school until he was picked up by his parents. So we could have had stayed, uh, you could have had waited, and there are a few other suggestions you could have gone, uh, gone with as well. So let's move on. Today we are going to be looking at our literal questions for our final week of Edward Tulane. Um, so we have one here. True or false? Edward Tulane enjoyed his life with Nellie and Lawrence. So true or false, Edward Tulane enjoyed his life with Nellie and Lawrence. So we did a, a, a similar true or false question last week. So we need to remember that we're going to start it with either true or false. And we can't just give our opinion here. We need to make sure that we're finding some evidence from the text and not just kind of guessing or um, giving a, our own opinion. We need to find the evidence in the text, which is what literal questions mean. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to underline the keywords in the question. Now, the keywords here, I would say enjoyed because we need to know that he's having fun in his life. I'd say life as well. And also I'm going to put Nellie and Lawrence there because they're the people that it's specifically about the looking after Edward. So my keywords, enjoyed, life, Nellie and Lawrence. Now what we're going to do is we're going to skim and scan the text for these key words. And remember, we may not see them exactly as they are in the question. It may not be enjoyed. So we might need to think of some synonyms for enjoyed, maybe um, liked um, or having fun or something along those lines. Life, Nelly, and Lawrence. So let's skim read page 76, which it kindly tells us is on here. So I've got the text in front of me here, and conveniently, it is already open to page 76, which is this one on the left hand side. So let's go through. I'm going to skim through looking for those words enjoyed, Nelly, Lawrence, or life. So this is him about being on the ocean. Oh, fantastic. So we've got the word life here. So just to remind me, what's that next step that we need to do? So I've skimmed and scanned for keywords. Now I need to read around the keywords before coming up with my answer. So I'm going to go to the beginning of this, this sentence and read it aloud. Besides, life in the little greenhouse with the fisherman and his wife was sweet. So we can see we've also got, it doesn't say Nellie and Lawrence, but it's talking about the fisherman who we know is Lawrence and his wife who we know is Nellie. And it doesn't say enjoyed, but it says that his life was sweet with them. So thinking about it, what does that mean? Is that showing that he true, that he is enjoying his life or not enjoying his life with Nellie and uh, Lawrence? So the fact that his life is sweet, I think definitely means he is enjoying uh, his life in the little greenhouse with, the, with those people. So now I can go back to my question and I'm going to write my answer. Remembering, of course, am I saying true or false as my first word? So I think definitely true. Edward is enjoying his life with Nelly and Lawrence. Is that enough? Is that enough there just to say he is enjoying his life with Nelly and Lawrence? Well, otherwise it could just be a 50 50. You're either going to guess true or you're going to guess false. We to make sure we get that mark to guarantee that I think we need to include that evidence. So Edward is enjoying his life with Nellie and Lawrence because it is described as being, and what was that word again that it described as sweet. Now check, does our answer make sense? So let's read through it again. True, Edward is enjoying his life with Nellie and Lawrence because it is described as being sweet. 
definitely makes sense. And does it answer the question? True or false, Edward Tulane enjoyed his life with Nellie and Lawrence. Definitely answers the question, and I've given a fact to prove that as well. So, hopefully on the board now, you can see all of your, uh, your literal questions, I should say. You've got eight of them here. Um, a lot of them can be done on the sheet. The ones that can't be done on the sheet, um, uh, just write those on a, another bit of paper underneath. If you don't have the sheet printed out at all, no problem. Just write down the numbers one to eight, and then you can just write the correct answer here. So if, for instance, you think it's a non-fiction text, just do number one on the paper, non-fiction. There's no page, uh, there's no reason for having the sheet printed out at all. So if you don't have it, do not worry. All of the steps to success, which I beg that you use to make sure that you're getting those answers correct and um, are on the, um, oh, sorry, are on the corner of your screen here. And the extension, write a paragraph explaining how Edward has changed in this chapter compared to how he was in the Tulane household. So that's talking about how was he before he moved to this little greenhouse and how is he now? I would also ask as well, go back to the uh, the learning uh, pro forma that you download at the beginning of each day and click on the link of me reading this chapter again. I think it'll, you'll find it really useful to go through this text and go over it one another time. And then I'd recommend you muting, uh, muting my voice and just going through that text yourself and perhaps reading it aloud uh, to maybe someone that's in the room or just to yourself or in your head. So everything that you need is uh, in front of you uh, or on the uh, on the learning document. Um, I really do advise that you go back and watch that video of me reading through that chapter one more time to make sure you fully understood it. So pause the video now and come back to the learning once you've um, once you finish these literal questions and hopefully the extension as well. Off you go. So guys, hopefully you have gone through all of those questions. I'm going to pop the answers on the screen for you now. So if you want to grab a different color pen, feel free to mark these yourself. So what kind of story is this? It is, of course, fiction. How many outfits did Nellie make for Edward? Three. Why was her, uh, Edward horrified at first? Because he was put in a dress and dressed like a girl when, of course, he's a boy. Uh, number five, what three things did Nelly bake? Bread, cookies, and pies, delicious. And then for these statements here, true, false, false, false for those four statements. Number five, why did Nelly cry? Because she remembered or talked about her son who had died. Number six, how did Lawrence carry Edward on his shoulders? And then can you match these together? So Nelly talked to Edward all day long. Lawrence took Edward for a stroll and Pellegrina frightened Edward with her glowing eyes. And number eight, how did Nellie calm Edward down when he was frightened? She sung a lullaby, a lullaby sorry, to him. And with the extension, I'm really hoping that some of you have managed to write one of those. Um, hopefully we've seen quite a big change in the way that Edward is behaving and the way that he's acting in this chapter compared to the way he was in the previous uh, previous chapters of the book and really looking forward to reading those on Seesaw a little later on. So guys, that is all from me. I will be, I'll see you guys again on tomorrow for the inference questions. So I'm just going to unshare my screen here. So guys, have a, uh, have a lovely rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of the home learning and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.